Hello friends. The video is regarding two stroke cylinder porting. Porting is not something that anyone can do. It's important to find the right tuner as well. We all love our bikes and we all want to get the maximum out of our bikes. Porting if done correctly can add a few horses and also change the character of the bike completely. Adding new things to the bikes brings a lot of happiness. It's always important to understand some things add value and some don't. I've seen videos which say sporting for 2000 rupees and whatnot, but it is not just the money that should help you decide whether to do it or not. A lot of videos are there on the topic, but nothing really helps a person decide whether to do it or not. Let's try to cover the topic in the most detailed way so that you understand the risks, especially since the prices of spares have skyrocketed. Before we dive deep into porting I need to explain ports to you. A port is an opening which controls the timing of air fuel mixture inside the cylinder. Now that we know what a port is, the next thing we need to learn what the port timing is. The opening and closing of each port in the cylinder is controlled by the movement of the piston. This vertical movement of the piston is converted into a rotational movement of the crank. One complete cycle means a full 360 degree rotation of the crank in a two stroke. So the amount of time the port opens can be denoted by an angle of rotation on the crank. This angle is called port timing. From the image on the screen you can understand that the crank is turning clockwise. We will start at the bottom dead center. You can see that both the inlet and exhaust ports are open. When the crank rotates 35 degrees, the inlet port closes. The air fuel mixture fills the crankcase at this stage due to the low pressure created inside the crankcase. Unlike the four stroke, the combustion chamber is a sealed unit and has no engine oil for lubrication. This is the reason 2T oil is mixed along with the fuel to lubricate the crank and the cylinder walls. When the intake port is closed, there is a positive pressure inside the cylinder and there is is a negative pressure in the exhaust. This leads to a phenomenon called scavenging and burn gases escape the combustion chamber. The process of injecting fresh air to assist the displacement of exhaust gases out of the combustion chamber is known as scavenging as well. Technically at the top dead center charge ignition happens. It's usually a few degrees before top dead center. In Yamaha RX bikes it is 17 degrees before top dead center and when a compressed air fuel mixture is ignited it leads to an explosion which puts a lot of force on the piston thus moving it down with great force. As the piston moves down, the exhaust gases are expelled. This creates a negative pressure inside the combustion chamber. When compared to the crankcase and fresh charge enters the combustion chamber through transfer ports when they are open. As the piston moves down, the exhaust gases are expelled. This creates a negative pressure inside the combustion chamber when compared to the crankcase. And fresh charge enters the combustion chamber through transfer ports when they open. This charge is compressed and ignited to create the next bang. From the explanation so far, you must have noted that there are some calculation involved in timing the ports or deciding how long a port will remain open with respect to the position of the crank. What does port timing affect? Basically everything. It decides at what RPM engine makes power, what RPM the engine redlines, moving the torque curve up the rev limit or down the rev limit. So there is mathematics involved. How many of us have seen mechanics use mathematical equation? Now there are calculators available online that can tell you the exact port duration you need based on the crank length and stroke and there are calculators that take into account everything like you see on the screen. Thus modification of a port dimension or timing is called porting. Now we all know that you can take material of a port to increase the port dimension and the reverse is not possible at least until you decide to sleeve the cylinder. Now let's talk about some basic terminologies mechanics use. This is my favorite, semi-port. Now we know what porting is, but what a semi-port? A mechanic who doesn't have knowledge of calculation of the port removes material from the exhaust port, thus increasing its timing. Making the port wide will always result in increase in power from the upper mid-range to peak RPM. However, there will be little or no loss in the mid-range power. Widening the ports has a limit. Technically, the limit is as long as the skirting of the piston can seal the exhaust port completely ensuring scavenging happens and the exhaust gases are expelled and compression is not affected. On the other hand, increasing the height above the intake port, thus effectively moving the exhaust port up will impact the compression so badly that the bike becomes almost unrideable. In the meantime, taking of material in the bottom of the port will let more unburned gases to escape. So the most important question is, taller exhaust port useful at all? In extreme racing scenarios such as drag racing, the exhaust port are made tall and the flywheel are lightened so that the engine reaches the power making RPM very fast and creates a hell lot of power. But if you try to ride a bike in the city, it will barely move unless you really ring the throttle, wasting the precious dinosaur juice. Semi-port also means taking off material from the intake. In some cases, technically a bigger reed valve will mean more air fuel mixture entering the crankcase. However, the negative pressure inside the crankcase might not be enough to open the reed and pull all the charge inside the crankcase. So here most of the mechanics use fiber petals 
in the reed valve with the intake and exhaust ported you will need better fueling and proper exhaust hence jetting is done to compensate the increase in air fuel volume to the change in the crankcase inlet area if you do not compensate this engine with bigger jets or bigger carbs the engine runs the risk of running lean and thus can lead to some catastrophic damage to the engine some of you might have seen holes on the piston this happens exactly due to this reason a ported engine spark plug reading is most important along with checking spark plug tip for metal shavings once fueling is taken care of we can improve the efficiency of the engine by using a calculated chamber to ensure unburned gases are pushed back into the cylinder during the compression cycle this is achieved by sound waves traveling in the opposite direction at a particular frequency which is produced at a particular rpm now let's talk full porting before going into full porting let's talk about transfer ports and their impact on the engine power delivery the transfer ports are the most important however unfortunately from the average tuners or mechanics viewpoint the transfer ports are the most difficult to modify and are least understood by definition the transfer ports have the job of transferring the air fuel mixture from the crankcase into the cylinder that sounds simple enough but after we consider all the factors involved they perform the most critical task of all ports they are responsible to inject the air fuel mixture from the crankcase to the cylinder they are responsible for maintaining the flow pattern of air fuel mixture to prevent them from escaping from the exhaust port yamaha and suzuki understood the full potential of these transfer ports these transfer ports helped to push the unburned gases from the cylinder with great force reducing the duration of these port further improved the pressure however the power band became narrower with decreasing the port timing and the pressure reduced with increasing the port dimensions thus making the transfer port difficult to play with for a normal mechanic but some grease monkeys have new age porting tools thus making it easier for them to mess around with these ports my suggestion to everyone is simple if you want to port a cylinder always buy a sleeve cylinder remove the sleeve go to the lathe get the sleeve made get all the port dimensions work out for your use case and port the sleeve before inserting it in the block since you have better access now chamfering is equally important like porting when you port a cylinder the ports are usually very close to 90 degrees thus are not friendly for the piston rings and that's what causes damage heads due to broken rings the damage head looks like as if wolverine was trapped inside the engine chamfering brings the edge close to 45 degrees or so which is piston ring friendly now there is another port called the seventh port or the boost port of yeis which is yamaha Yamaha energy injection system not to be confused with YPVS which is Yamaha power valve system this port is located above the inlet port with the torque bottle it said to improve low end torque this port is present in all Yamaha sold in India only post RXG the torque bottle the boost bottle the power box became standard all these are different names basically TV Suzuki Shogun and Shaolin has power box but there is no port to improve induction the main role of the power port is to complement the transfer ports when so, pressurized uh, charge enters the transfer port it pushes the exhaust gases sometimes some unburned charge also escapes along with the exhaust gases boost port compensates this loss by pushing some charge into the cylinder coupled with a boost bottle there is always some charge stored inside the bottle which can readily be made available when the intake port is yet to open now apart from the cylinder the crankcase can be ported to increase efficiency of the flow of gases in the crankcase this can be coupled with porting the bottom of the piston and modifying the piston skirts you can also port the carburetor slide for better air flow choosing your tuner is very important thing most of the mechanics have learned this by seeing other mechanics who have seen this being done by other mechanics that is the reason no tuner will give you the port maps and tell you exactly what he has done and how it will affect the power delivery so porting is a very misunderstood term and often people associate porting with increase in power there are hundreds of people who have gone down the rabbit hole ended up paying a lot of money to get their bikes running post the porting job many people complained of their bikes misfiring after porting and the tuner blamed it on ignition carburetor or anything that can get the customer off his shoulder most of you must have a lot of question yeah. now i suggest you watch the video multiple times to understand what does what take a call based on that to evaluate a tuner ask him to show you bikes he has done with some the requirements as yours ride the bike ask him what has gone into it don't consider a tuner as god at the end of the day he is selling you his services and your money should also, also buy you his loyalty i am not asking you to be an arrogant person but if you do your homework well you will know what you need you will know if you need a better ignition or a bigger carb you will know what benefits will a v force reed valve do to your build you will know if you need those uni pod filters or not if you trust the mechanic with procurement or 
you have a better option to procure things at a cheaper price and you know for sure that what you're buying is original and not some Chinese knockoff, it will help you stay in budget along with a tighter grip on the budget. I hope this video was of great use. Let me know if this video was helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed. I will see you in the next one. Bye.